Hello and welcome back to another Project Diablo 2 video. I am Kordesh and today we are going to be talking about leveling as the sorceress. Now I did want to do a disclaimer. I was leveling a sorceress for testing on the open beta and those characters got wiped off the face of the planet. So I'm going to have to use some other characters in what I have to showcase some skills. I do have a level 12 Andario kill that I recorded before the wipe, but just a heads up. Anyways, let's get into it. All right, so for the main skill that we're gonna be using on the Sorceress is Hydra. Now, the reason why I'm picking Hydra is it's very powerful mechanically. And when I say that, just like summons were very powerful for leveling because all you need is skill points, uh, Hydra is very powerful mechanically because you can use it and be very safe. So for example, you cast it three times, and that's the cap is just having three of these, and then you can just run around, and they will persist for five seconds each, and so it allows you to damage, they will auto-target things, and all you have to focus on is surviving. You do not need to care about, you know, casting spells and damaging monsters. So, that is very powerful mechanically. On top of that, you can also do some really cool stuff, like, for example, oh, this doorway, it's, it's not safe in there. I can lob hydras pretty far off screen, and they can actually shoot around corners. And so, a lot of times people will say, like, oh, Blizzard's really good. Well, Blizzard's not going to be able to, you know, attack a ranged monster around a corner for you. So, I really, really like Hydra. The single target's great. Once you get level 30, Hydra, they shoot fireballs, and that has much better AoE, so that's great. It's just a very good ability. So, anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the skill order breakdown. Alright, so for the skill order breakdown, I am going to show it on this handy-dandy website by Between Walls. So uh, I'm going to have a link for that in the description. It's a great tool. But let's go ahead and get into it. So when you're leveling this build, you have two options. One, you can struggle to level 12 and not have to blow a respec, or you can use a respec. So if you're willing to use a respec, Charge Bolt is very good because as you put more points into it, the lightning damage increases and the bolts also increase. And those bolts can kind of shotgun monsters. So you can do a lot of single target damage, but you also have a nice little multiple projectiles to clear area effect. Now, I don't actually recommend doing this. I think that a token of absolution is worth the time spent kind of struggling to level 12. So how should you level? Now, I think that you should level with Firebolt. And you start off with a staff that gives plus one to Firebolt, and it's not an exciting spell. It is a single target projectile that scales up pretty meagerly with damage. All right, so I changed my scene real quickly, and that was because I wanted to show the Firebolt leveling. So the reason why we're pumping Firebolt as much as we can early on is you can see, you know, plus two damage, plus two damage, plus two damage. It kind of scales very minimally until you hit level 9. 17 to 25 is a huge jump compared to the 2 damage it's been getting. So yeah, we're trying to rush to level 9 and we're getting lesser Hydra at level 12. So we're trying to rush the Firebolt. So alright, so that being said, let's go ahead and I'm we're currently level 4 but we have the Den of Evil quest so technically we're level 3. So we're just going to keep pumping this up all the way until we hit 9. And right now we are level 9 because of the Den of Evil quest. And so now what do we do? From here, 1 point into warmth is fine. You know, getting a little bit of mana regen is going to be good. And we are going to go ahead and pump another point into Firebolt. And we are not level 12 because of the Den of Evil quest. You have to subtract 1 there. And then on the once we hit the next level, we can finally put our point into Lesser Hydra. And Lesser Hydra is awesome. So... The way that this skill works, let me go ahead and change my scene. All right, so now that we have Lesser Hydra, we need to talk about the actual damage. This website, the data might be from an older season, so don't worry too much about the numbers on here. But I wanted to talk about the Fire Hydra damage is probably around 10 at this point. Uh, hopefully the Andariel footage can show what it actually is. But each shot a Hydra shoots out is about 10 damage. Now there are three Hydra heads, and then each of those Hydra heads shoot three times per duration, sometimes four. So we'll just say three heads, three shots, so we can multiply the 10 damage by nine. So that's 90 damage, and then we can do that two more times. So we're looking at 270 damage at level 12 single target. And I think that's pretty conservative of an estimate. I think it's actually higher than that. So 
really good stuff. And I'll show you kind of how impressive that is on Indario. But yeah, so Lesser Hydra, it's it's pretty it's pretty straightforward and simple. From there, what we are going to do is we are going to level this up until we are level 16. So right now we're 15 because of Den of Evil. And then right when we're 16, we put one more point, get it to level 5. And the reason for that is at level 17, we're going to put a point in Telekinesis. And then 18, boom, we're getting Teleport. And Teleport's just going to make farming much easier. And specifically, I think that you're going to want Teleport for farming Countess. And I'm going to get more into that later. So that's level 18. From 19 to 26, we are jamming points into Lesser Hydra. So 19 to 26... Again, it says 27 because of the Den of Evil quest. Also, at this point, you might have gotten the skill book from Radiment. If that's the case, you can go ahead and slam it into Firebolt if you want, or save it. Doesn't matter. At level 27, though, we are going to pick up Fireball and Enchant Fire. And then, so that's 27 Fireball, 28 Enchant Fire, Enchant Fire, and then 29 is Hold. So you can use that Sewer Point, or you can Hold. And then after that, boom, we get to level 30. And we can put our points into both Hydra and Fire Mastery. So from here on out, it really depends on what you want. I would recommend just pumping Hydra all day. And then after you get Hydra maxed, you're going to go all the way back and then start maxing out Lesser Hydra. And the reason for that is Hydra is going to be used when there's many packs of monsters. But on bosses and single target, Lesser Hydra does much better single target damage. After that, we are going to be maxing Firebolt. And then finally, Fire Mastery. And the reason for this is Hydras can no longer pierce. And so you can see from Fire Mastery, it gains pierce. And that doesn't matter. So the actual percentage increase on the synergy is better by just putting points in Firebolt than getting points in Fire Mastery. I was actually going to do a bunch of math kind of showcasing when to get what. But it was very obvious without even having to do that. So no worries. Uh, anyways, this exact breakdown is going to be in the description below. So you will have a cheat sheet that you can absolutely use. All right, so now I'd like to talk about gearing. And so for gearing, you need to check Akara basically every time that you go back to town to buy potions and items, and you're looking for a two-socket staff. And when I was leveling up a character to level 12, I had found, I think, five of these. And one was too expensive because it had like a crazy, you know, plus three a, a skill or something. But you can always reset her by leaving and then coming right back and checking what she has and the reason why we're doing this is we are trying so here we go we got this one that's pretty expensive none of that stuff really matters we also have this one whatever very expensive but they pop up pretty frequently so here's one to warmth that's probably better than some of the other stuff so we went ahead and grabbed that and we are going to use this to make a leaf now the other rune order that we're going to be trying to make is a stealth and you might be thinking like, oh, I didn't cover items on many of the other builds. This build is going to benefit greatly from both of those items. And I think that it's actually worth it to grind for that. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up those items right now. All right. So in normal D2 LOD or D2R, everyone rushes a stealth. We are actually going to do it for this build. And we're going to do it for a couple reasons. One... The 20 FCR on a chess piece is just so good for the Sorceress. The, the run walk is really nice. The fast hit recovery is really nice. The mana is very good. But we have nothing to tank for us. So we can set the Hydras and we can run around. But having the faster run walk, being able to put those Hydras down faster, it's just going to be much safer and a much better experience for us. So also the Sorceress has the very very powerful ability to teleport and so once you do become very powerful you can start skipping content like oh i'm too strong for this okay just skip to the next zone oh i'm too strong for this skip to the next zone it's and so getting yourself very powerful early on by farming the normal countess for rune word uh stealth is going to be great for you now the other rune word that i highly recommend is going to be leaf so we were looking for those two socket staves and this is huge because it adds plus three to fire skills. That's going to be a lot of damage early on. It's also going to give you some flat defense, which is not negligible, especially early on. The 33 cold res is kind of cool. Mana after kill is really good too. Now this firebolt, if you end up putting lesser hydras down and then using firebolt as kind of like supplemental single target, then cool. However, 
this does not, you know, having plus to skills does not affect synergies. So synergies only work from hard points. So really a lot of this stuff doesn't matter too much. The warmth in the mana regen is going to be nice, but until you get a bigger mana pool, it's not going to be as relevant. But it's just pretty easy to make. This Rao rune might be a little tricky to get. However, if you look up the different runes and you farm Countess for a while, you could just cube up to it. It's really not that hard. So if you do get unlucky, it's still kind of deterministic to make a leaf. And I would definitely recommend making both stealth and leaf on this character. Because once you do, you're really off to the races. You're not going to have to stop until you reach hell, in my, in my opinion. So really, really cool stuff. Other gear, faster cast rate rings, you know, plus the fire skills on your amulet, on your helmet, things like that. You know, obviously you want things like life and resists, but with the stealth and the leaf, you're just going to be, you're good. And so you're going to have to spend some time early on, and then after that, you can fly through at least all of normal until you start doing some bail runs. As far as attributes, uh, this character is obviously level 84, um, because my closed beta characters got wiped, but you want enough strength or dexterity for gear that you want to wear. And then you want the rest in the vitality. If you do plan on respecking at some point, if you want to put a little bit of energy, that's fine. It might just make your life a little bit easier. But really, it's just strength and then vitality all the way. All right, we are now at Andariel. So I'm going to go ahead and put up a portal. Uh, I'm level 12. I'm definitely going to level before we fight Andy, but I'm not going to allocate those skill points. Um, I'll just kind of showcase my gear. So I have the... Uh, starting item that you get as a sorceress and then random rares nothing that really matters this has some ed and some poison res max damage i don't have faster cast rate rings a white sash and then fire res boots so really nothing relevant so we're gonna go in and i'm gonna kind of show how it works so basically we're just gonna summon some hydras and then we're gonna try and walk around and be safe so with this it does cost a lot of mana each hydra is like 10 mana but they do some work. So the, the big appeal of Hydra is you throw it out and you can just like kind of chill and run around. Obviously you don't have to. So I could throw out Hydra's, you know, pop a mana potion and then start firebolting. And my firebolt does hit, you know, for about 50 damage. So it's pretty decent at this point. I'm going to go ahead and grab this two socket hard leather armor. Just for, that's a stealth base. And let me make sure my potions are set up correctly. So... What I want to do is I want to grab some mana potions. So we're going to open the door. We're going to head up towards the top side. Cast a couple hydras. We're going to kill some stuff. And then we're just going to try and kind of play it slowly. And the big thing that we're going to be trying to do here is we're going to be trying to lure, lure Andariel to me. And then I'm going to cast my hydras out. And then I'm going to run around. So there's Andariel. I'm going to start just firebolting her. Now she's running at me. I'm trying to walk kind of in a straight line so the Hydra projectiles won't miss. But anyway, so I supplemented a little bit with Firebolt. And yeah, level 12 Andariel kill. Very easy. Andariel is a little bit weak to fire damage. So it, maybe that looked a little bit more impressive than it is. But really, the important thing is the mechanic. You put out the Hydra. It lasts for five seconds. You run around. You don't actually have to keep casting. It's not dangerous. You just throw it out there. You can also lead. So, for example, if this room down here is filled with monsters, I can lead with a Hydra, and it'll start clearing that out. And that's really important for things like Act 2. Um, really just Act 2. It's very, very powerful. But, yeah, so very safe play style. But you are going to have to get some some you know items to make sure you're powerful enough. So that's the Indarl Showcase. If you are enjoying my content, I'd really appreciate if you would hit that subscribe button, mainly so I don't have to spam Reddit or Discord or anywhere else, and you could just get my videos whenever I post them. So that concludes the Sorceress Leveling Guide. If you have any critiques, comments, concerns, questions, whatever, feel free to post in the comments down below. I'd love to hear it, and I will see you next time.